So what do you do when you only have a Mac Mini G4 and you want to get into network attached storage? Well, let's find out in this video. So this is going to be our basic setup for today. An external hard drive, a Mac Mini G4, and, uh, well, a network. The Mac Mini G4 in question here is a 1.25 GHz model with a gigabyte of RAM running OS X Leopard which we'll be using for our demonstration purposes today. And we have a 160 gigabyte external drive. It's from Western Digital and is connected via USB. Now the Mac Mini is capped at USB 2, which means 480 megabits per second. And it only has a 100 megabit ethernet connection going out the back. So we'll be limited in practice, uh, mostly by the network interface, which will cap out at 10 megabytes per second, more or less. Uh, transfer speed. So let's get into the nitty gritty and take a look at how to set you know, some file sharing up on this and give it some testing. Alright, now we're at the desktop we can start accessing our Mac Mini. For today's purpose we'll be using Windows. There are two ways to access it. You have SSH as well as VNC. If you're doing this from a Mac you can just use screen sharing. You'll need to enable screen sharing to access the system over VNC as well. I'll be putting this SSH window over here so we can monitor system resources consumption. Okay. Here we have VNC set up so we can take a look at the desktop of our Mac Mini directly. Actually, screen capturing a machine that old will not give us the best results, so I didn't bother with that. Okay, so now that we're at the desktop of our Mac Mini, just empty the trash because that always annoys me, we can go to the system preferences. Then we'll go to sharing. And we'll need to enable file sharing. I've already enabled it here. I've also enabled screen sharing so we can access the machine via VNC. You need to enable this just using your uh, regular monitor connected to your Mac Mini to set this up. And after you've done that, you can just run it headless and remote in using VNC. I'm using the VNC viewer here as you can see. Now remote login is required to log in using SSH. So let's get into some file sharing. If you want to enable file sharing with Windows computers you need to go to options and make sure share files and folders using SMB is checked. It is in my case because I've already set this up. AFP is by default. This is the default file sharing method for Max. So, all that we have at the moment is this public folder here. We can also see the default file shares that macOS uses. The owner of the folder, the one that created it, usually has read and write access. The users and administrators groups typically have read only, and the everyone group always has read only as well. If you don't want guest access, we can just go to everyone here and say no access. This will fully disable access to that share for guest users. So you can only log in using a user that is using some, some form of authentication either through a password or otherwise. So let's create some shares here. I've already set up, I set up a couple of folders that I want to share. You can pick any folder you like, but for the purposes of this video I've gone to my Macintosh HD, created a folder called shares, I created a number of folders in there called documents, music, pictures, and video. We're going to access those or make them accessible rather over the network. We'll just add them into our dialog in system preferences like so. Just hit the plus icon, go through each folder. Do pictures here. And last but not least, the video folder. Okay. We just have to make sure that everyone has read and write access for today's video so we can easily access all these folders without bothering with any kind of ACLs. Our options are limited anyway because this is not a server version of Mac OS X. So you really don't have a lot of options in terms of uh, file sharing and uh, access. This is basically all you get. 
So we've created our folders. We verify that SMB is enabled. So we should in theory be able to access these folders via Windows as well, just through the Explorer. So just to make sure that we see what kind of Mac we're running on and we're not faking anything in between, we have a 1.25 gigahertz Power PC G4 and a gigabyte of RAM. All right, let's minimize VNC player, VNC viewer rather, and go into my computer. We'll create a new network connection. We'll use some random letters. Well, let's use a, uh, well, now I can kind of floppy drive sometimes. Let's go with B and we'll go Mac Mini G4 because that's the host name that it has on the network. And we'll add the video share. Okay, it's added it. So this is on the internal drive. Well, take a look at the external drive in a bit. So now we can create folders in here. So you can see, there's a new folder. We can also add some video files from other sources. I'll see if I can copy some over. Let's see here. We'll use a rip that I got from a video CD. As you can see, we're capping out at 11 megabytes per second. This is a hard limit of the 100 megabit Ethernet connection on the Mac Mini. And that worked just fine. Now we go back into VNC. Go to the video folder here that we shared, and we can see the file is on there as well. We can probably even play it on there. Eh, wrong codec. That happens with these old Macs. <laughs> no worries though, the file is on there, that's good. Also, in the meantime, I'll actually turn the external hard drive on so we can do some stuff with that as well. If you want to enable that one to get some file sharing going to it, we'll have to go to the disk utility in Mac OS X because I'm not sure what kind of format is on there. So we'll just go with Erase, Mac OS Extended Journal, give it a name and erase it. Not use it for time machine. What we can do, however, is create a folder on here. We'll call it bulk. And we can add that to our shared folders as well. Let's go back and see some preferences. File sharing. For it to pick that up. For today's purposes, we'll go with read and write access for everyone again. Now that should be sorted, so we should be able to add a, another drive here. We'll use the E letter for that Mac Mini G4 forward slash bulk. And it added it as you can see here. And it also reports the bigger capacity. Here we can differentiate, the B drive is on the internal drive, that's a 60 gigabyte one. And this is the 160 gig external drive. And we can also create folders in here and files as well. We could even copy over that file from the other drive and put it on here. This will go a bit slower because it's going to do a back and forth because it is reading the file over the network and then retransferring it over the network via my computer. So that's a bit slower. If you copy it directly from the source to this drive, 
goes a little bit faster, but there is some overhead you can see here that's causing it to uh, go a bit slower. You can also see SMBD here in the SSH window. It uh, spikes up in CPU a little bit, but it's not nowhere near as CPU bottleneck at this point. It's probably some overhead due to the USB interface, but it is definitely usable for sure. In fact, you could possibly even do Time Machine over the network <laughs> to that disk now. So, yeah, this is not very useful, but, you know, just a fun little experiment. You can go to Choose Backup Disk, it should report a couple of options. It's only finally the Time Machine share on my NAS, it would appear. Oh well, that would have been fun. <laughs> but honestly, there's not a whole, uh, whole lot more to it. You basically enable file sharing, you create a couple folders you want to share, you make sure that SMB is enabled when Windows support is, is, uh, is paramount, and uh, you just add the shares and go from there. I hope you learn something in this video. I will be making a follow-up on a Mac that is a little bit more powerful and has some faster networking. We'll be using a Power Mac G4. We'll still have a G4 CPU running at more or less the same clock speed, but we'll have gigabit ethernet to see where the limits really are. We're probably going to be running up against the limits of the IDE hard drives rather than the network interface or the CPU in that case, but I guess you'll be just as curious as me to find that out. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you all for watching.